in the previous class we have started mathematics for data science and machine learning and our first topic was linear algebra and uh, we did covered various concepts under linear algebra and uh, here i have presented in front of you that how to quantify okay that means what are the various ways to quantify okay so if i am available with one okay that means a numeric term only that means it's a scalar thing if i am available with this numerical term with some direction okay that means if i am going to represent this thing on a plane 2d plane 3d plane whatsoever then it it is a vector quantity and uh, then if i add further more dimensions to it then it will be like a matrix format and further more dimensions that means matrix of matrix then it will be a tensor okay so tensor is actually a higher dimension entities all right so here are the dimensions 1d tensor is just uh, your vector if i would say it's a 1d 0d is your scalar quantity okay then 2d it's like a matrix then 3d tensor okay we can call it a 3d matrix and so on 4d 5d 6d and so on fine and uh, various operations now if we say what are the various operations which we can perform on your vectors so we did check uh, checked some of the examples for uh, let us say if i am available with a vector quantity a where c and d are the scalars okay so uh, if i need to operate them over a so either i can do like this first operate d over a okay and then whatever the results you are getting now then you can apply c over the result okay or either i can multiply c and d and then i can uh, um, apply it over a okay both the case are fine here a plus b okay i am available with the two vectors i need to add these two vectors so either i can uh, multiply this c after the addition or i can i can just multiply to both of these vectors separately okay distribution then here is also the same thing uh, happening in the next case that uh, c plus d again two scalar things i am available with and uh, if i do multiply uh, with this to a vector then i am going to get the same as i am going to multiply the vector to both of these scalars separately and then add them so these are the properties either you can take distributive property or some about commutative property whatsoever we already seen we checked in the last class all right addition and subtraction these are quite simple things which you can apply on the vectors and uh, you know you can just add them according just we need to check that what is the order okay so here if i would say in this case the order of the vectors are that means three rows and the one column three cross one three cross one then you can add it and you can get the result again as three cross one okay dot product or the inner product we have already seen that uh, this thing in detail uh, in the previous class okay if i am available with a vector like uh, 1 cross 3 that means this is 1 cross 3 1 row and the 3 columns and this is 3 cross 1 another vector okay so it's actually a 1d matrix this is actually also a 1d matrix but you know you can check what is the rule for the multiplication of the two vectors or the two matrices okay two matrix I, i would say that is a better term okay so um, this is 1 cross 3 this is 3 cross 1 so 3 3 you know it matches then only we can have a multiplication of both of them all right so uh, here this is the result which i got after the multiplication and the dot product says dot product says it's a dot b and we have also seen that in case of dot product and the inner product i am getting if a vector dot b vector is been done the result is magnitude of a multiply by magnitude of b dot cos theta and theta is the angle between the two vectors that's what we have already seen and if i talk about the outer product okay outer product so outer product in that particular case uh, what uh, uh, we uh, discussed that means here outer product element wise scaling of one vector by another that results into a matrix is actually an outer product okay 
so if i do take these vectors u1 u2 u3 u4 v1 v2 v3 okay uh, that means if i need to have an outer product of u and v so here is a product being taken like u dot v transpose v transpose okay so uh, here whatever be the vector was uh, v its transpose has been taken and then here is the your final matrix you are getting okay so there was a difference between this dot and the uh, outer product inner product and the outer product in case of inner product you are going to get a scalar value that's what i have already explained in the previous class while in case of a cross or i would say outer product you are going to get a matrix that is the difference between these two here is a matrix result okay so uh, you need to remember that what's actually uh, i'm going to get in the products all right so uh, that is your outer uh, product then what are the operations on the matrices multiplication we have already seen uh, this thing and you very well know that this is a rule which i need to follow for the matrix multiplication okay this is two cor uh, two cross four matrix this is four cross three matrix and if i need to multiply them the resultant will be two cross three that means this two and this three will be result and the rule says this four and this four should have to be same then only i'm going to get the result as two cross three okay so that uh, that's the step to follow for the multiplication all right and then uh, what's uh, next here inner product explanation of the matrix multiplication so uh, whether inner or outer whatsoever be the product of the matrices is all, is all same it takes the same rule same concepts to be uh, you know follow up so here you need to take the first row then you need to multiply it with this then this then this okay and you need to write all the results then you need to take this row you need to multiply by this then this and this then you need to put up the uh, your results here so first a21 into b11 or for example here they have already done the marking so if i take a21 into b12 plus a22 into b22 plus a23 into b32 plus a24 into b42 this is what i am going to do that will be c22 so here i have replaced uh, this complete thing with a c22 and similarly i am going to multiply the same row with this this column that will be c23 okay so that that's that's the process of doing the multiplication uh, of the two matrices okay now uh, it's not mandatory that it a dot b is equal to b dot a this also you very well know a dot b is not equal to b dot a for example if i took this thing on the front and this thing at the second they will not be same okay this property is not followed in the matrix multiplication all right now uh, the thing is row reduction or gaussian elimination there are few more properties which we uh, needs to be uh, apply on the matrices okay what is this gaussian elimination or the row reduction techniques see there are certain operations which can be produced with the rows of the matrices we can change the matrix orientation okay and the, but doesn't change the interpretation of the data or equation represented but there will be the changes in the values of the matrices however the overall changes uh, which is to be done as per the order that will remain the same order of the matrix will remain same however by doing this process over the matrix okay just changing the value doing some operations over it okay it will change it 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 will change the matrix but doesn't change the interpretation of the data or equation represented how what is it saying because there is one requirement during the solving of linear equations and inverse of a matrix this step row reduction or the gaussian elimination is one of the important steps okay so what happens row matrix row operations two rows of a matrix can be interchanged remember if we are going to work upon the matrices two of its rows can be interchanged okay the elements in any row may be multiplied by non zero number okay this has also been possible any number any scalar quantity you can multiply with the row okay and then multiply a row by a non zero number and add another row this is also possible and we can update any other row also okay any doubt please let me know fine so uh, the thing is 
these are the common operations i hope you have also uh, studied in the matrices that i am going to multiply a number to the matrix okay then it will be multiplied to any of the row then i have applied applied some transformation over the rows or either i have also performed the transformations over the columns okay so here are the row operations i am talking about the same thing also followed in the column operations also all right so for example this is your matrix okay this is our matrix if i perform the row operations over it that means interchange r1 by r2 it is possible so row 1 is 3 18 12 okay and 21 and uh, this is augmented matrix actually augmented matrix all right so if i do interchange r1 by r2 so you know r2 that is 1 2 minus uh, 3 and 5 this will come on, on the r1 position r1 will be shifted to the r2 position and if i multiply 3 with the r1 no it's it's also possible you can multiply it Okay, so it will be your uh, three uh, three multiplied by R one, so it will be nine fifty four and so on. And if I need to update row three, row three by some operations, because there might be something happening or uh, you know coming uh, coming in my mind to solve this matrix to convert this matrix into simplified uh, simplified notation. Okay, so I can apply some transformations over the rows. So this is one of the sample transformation two R two plus R three R three. That means I am going to update the row number R three, and you can see that there is an updation happened. That means the in the fr uh, front it becomes a zero. Then this is one. This is minus two. Okay, that means I have simplified this matrix. Okay, that means this value I got zero. That means I want to convert this matrix into some form. Okay, so you know these transformations. Right now I am just teaching you the row operations. Okay, you can follow up the same things with the column operation also. All right. So ultimately, these operations is going to help us in reducing the matrix. Okay, to the uh, your no normal or uh, you know simple values. Okay. Now, types and representation of a matrix. I hope you also know about the diagonal matrix. We have seen uh, in the previous class also. Okay, a matrix with all the elements except diagonal being zero. Okay, so this is a matrix where all the uh, diagonal elements are existing and the rest of all are zero. So it's a diagonal matrix. Okay, we are also available with a matrix that that is lower triangular and upper triangular. See. Uh, a matrix with all the elements below the diagonal are zero is called as upper triangular matrix. Okay, with all the elements zero below the diagonal, that's called as upper triangular matrix. Okay, so here it is. It's an upper triangular matrix. Okay, and this is lower triangular matrix. Okay, that means all the elements above the diagonal are zero, and rest of all are non-zero. So this is lower triangular matrix. Okay, identity matrix, a diagonal matrix with all the elements one, all the elements one. So you know you can see here in diagonal all the elements are one. So this is an identity matrix. Okay, and having a property a dot i equal to a. See i is identity matrix. No, this is identity. If I multiply any matrix with this identity matrix, I am going to get the same result. That's the property actually. Okay, so it's an identity matrix. Fine. Symmetric matrix. What is a symmetric matrix? Matrix whose transpose is same to the original matrix is said to be a symmetric matrix. Okay, if I do take a transpose, that means if I convert row to column, column to rows, and still I am going to get the same matrix, then it is said to be symmetric in nature. All right. And skew symmetric matrix means matrix whose transpose is equal to the negative of the original matrix. Okay. So if I do calculate the transpose, and if it is coming to be negative, then it is skew symmetric. And here are the examples of it. This is symmetric in nature. This matrix. If I do take the transpose, I am going to get the same matrix. This is skew symmetric matrix. Okay, because uh, the transpose of A will going to be like minus of A. This is skew symmetric in nature. Okay, fine. The very easy terms. Now, row Euclidean form. See, a matrix which satisfies the following uh, properties is called as a row Euclidean form. What are the properties? The first non-zero number from the left is always to the right of the first non num non-zero number in the row above. Okay, very much important thing. The first non-zero number from the left. So go from the left. Okay, check out from the left. Non-zero number. Is always right to the is always right. That number should be present right to the 
let me write of the first non zero of the row above okay now what does this mean how what is the orientation that we need to check out an example and then we will understand ki uh, we are talking going to the extreme left checking a number and saying that sir this is non zero it is always to the right of a first non zero number in the row above okay so if i do consider a row above it and this number which i picked initially that should be in the right of another non zero number of the row above okay so i hope if you are understanding my words this is this is a simple statement okay if you are taking a number and you are taking a row above it okay so the above you are taking row any element which is present there that is non zero in nature this number initially which you took this should be non zero and this should be present in the right of the above row element that is also a non zero then you are going to say so it's a row equilian form and row consisting of all the zeros are at the bottom of the matrix whatever be the zero if you are available with the zeros all the rows which are having zeros okay that will be at the bottom of the matrix so then you are going to say it's a row equilian form okay and we have seen this example this check out in the previous class okay so reduce row equilian form how a matrix which satisfy the following properties that's the first uh, thing which we have uh, you know studies these two properties that's a row equilian form so first non zero in, uh, in the first row is the number 1 and the second row starts with the number 1 further it is to the right of the leading entry okay and the leading entry in each row must be non zero number in its column and any zeros rows are placed at the bottom so these are actually whatever the property which i have told about these are similar in nature okay so here it is for example you are available with a matrix a b c 0 d uh, e and 0 0 f what is the reduce equilian form of it okay so if i do consider this thing this thing this is my non zero element extreme left this is my non zero element extreme left okay any row above it any row above it should have a non zero number this is one and this number should be present on the right of this number okay so obviously on the right of this one this one is present this is also non zero this is also non zero okay same case if i take above row of this middle row i just take one okay one all right and this one is present on the right of this one okay so this is non zero this is non zero and it's present on the right of this one and in case if any of the row is completely zero uh, here it is not there is no row which is completely zero but still uh, because there is no possibility looking here to make this row zero but if it happens in case any of the row is completely zero then it should be at the bottom of the matrix it should be here only okay so you need to this is a equilian form equilian form is means i am having zeros zeros and all these things and i need to reduce it equilian form when i am going to have one okay when i am going to have one here 1 1 0 1 0 this is reduced equilian form and this is an equilian form and how to get a matrix into equilian form you have already studied about these transformations yeah here it is matrix row transformations if you are going to apply these operations then only you are able to convert any matrix into equilian form okay and this is reduced equilian form all right now um in you know linear uh, algebra you are been available with the system of linear equations okay so here is a system of linear equations i am having 2x plus y minus z and these these are the three equations with x y z as a uh, variables okay and uh, i need to you know solve these equations okay using uh, row operations all right and i hope you have done in your mathematics also in your engineering you do perform these tasks so you create an augmented matrix of it this is the augmented matrix that means i am going to take the coefficients of the variables and take the, these values 8 minus 11 3 and uh, uh, you know here in an augmentation form and here i am performing the row operations l2 plus 3 by 2 l1 and this will be l2 and l3 plus any any kind of operations now you can do from your side to just reduce your matrix okay any kind of operations it's up to you just to uh, you know perform and reduce your matrix into that means 0 and 1 if it is possible max 0 just try to make it as 
how many figures how many terms and they are possible to be zero so here are the operations i did applied over um, l2 to make it as you know this is the simplified l2 and this is your simplified l3 okay so uh, here are the results and afterwards i did perform the transformation over l3 again l3 again okay and this is my uh, this is my updated l3 okay so this is row equilian form 2 1 and 0 0 0 you can see that this is row equilian form okay if i'm going to get 0 0 0 here and here also the same 0 0 0 this is row equilian form and now and now the matrix is now in a no row equilibrium form, also called as triangular form. Now uh, the thing is, if you want to apply some more, some some more operations over it. For example, if I multiply L two by two, okay, if I multiply L two by two, you know this one by two will be over, and this is the result I'm going to get. And mul and minus multiply minus with L three, so this is the result I'm going to get. And and the next thing is. If I will perform L1 minus L2 to L1, so L1 minus L2 to L1, so and then half of L1 to L1, so you know it will give me it will give me this thing, you know th this result. All right, that means one zero zero and uh, zero one zero and zero zero one. That will be called as a reduced Euclidean form. This is reduced Euclidean form. All right, we have already checked. Fine. So all these operations, all these transformations, you can apply, and here you are independent. You know, you are multiplying the fractional values also to the rows. You are performing addition. You are performing uh, subtraction, and every, anything you are, you are free from your side. Whatever you want to do, okay, everything is applicable here. Okay, and you have reduced your matrix into this format. All right. So you know the system of linear equations. Whatever be the thing is, the, this is your uh, linear equations. All right linear equations and you can uh, convert this system of linear equations into your matrix format and you can apply uh, the equilibrium form and yeah any any question please let me know yes any question rule number 219 she raised her hand Okay, so if you are having any doubt now, you can unmute yourself and you can ask. All right. So, uh, you know, th th these are your equations, linear equations, and you can transform it, you can convert it into matrices. Because, you know, if you go and solve these equations, you know that, sir, for solving two variables, X and Y, I require two equations. For solving three variables, I require three equations. And if I solving solve it analytically, just by you know calculating uh, the values of x first, then putting and in, into another equation, then calculating y, then calculating z, you know it will be complex. Instead of that, you can see if I perform these kind of transformations, it will be easier, easier to find the value of the variables. Okay, so that's why matrices are something very much important. Okay, and then uh, what I'm having homogeneous system of linear equation. Homogeneous system of linear equation. Solving the system of linear equation, the system can be solved by converting augmented matrix formed into row Euclidean form. That's what I did and perform the substitution. There are various kinds of solution which are available. These solutions are independent, consistent and the unique solutions. There are three types of solutions available to you. Independent, consistent and a unique solution. Okay, so a row reduced matrix has the same number of non-zero rows as variables. Okay, for example, this thing. Okay, if I am having, if I am having a row reduced matrix has the same number of non-zero rows as variables, then you know what I am going to say? What kind of solution I am going to have? This is an independent solution. That means what? The number of non-zero rows and the number of variables both needs to be same there then there must be at least many equations as a variables to get as an independent solution okay independent solution fine now when we convert the augmented matrix back in, into the equation form we are getting x equal to 3 y equal to 1 and z equal to 2 okay here here x uh, you know 1 into x is equal to 3 1 into y equal to 1 and 1 into z equal to 2 that's what we solve in our matrix matrices 
here is the result which you are getting by seeing this matrix okay now now again again i am going to get uh, this kind of matrix this is this is a matrix which i am getting a row reduced matrix which has more variable than non zero rows that means variables are more and non zero rows are uh, you know less okay non zero rows are less okay so here is a zero one, one row is completely zero one row is completely zero and you are available with three variables so number of variables are more and non zero rows are uh, you know less than the number of variables so there doesn't uh, we don't have the number of zeros but usually there is and uh, this could happen when there is less equations than the variables so you know here we are going to get less equations obviously because you know this thing is completely zero so we don't create any we can't form any equations here only the equations can be created by these this row number 1 and this row number 2 so the equations which will be created are x plus 3z equal to 4 and y minus 2z equal to 3 these are the equations which can be created here it is okay and and i need to you know uh, these are the two equations now uh, the z column is not cleared at all okay so the other variables will be defined in terms of z because z is something which i i don't know what what it could be because the, here is a scenario happened that only one is the no, one is the zero and then remaining are the non zero and a number of variables are more so if i do create a equations from this uh, matrix so this is the equation which i am going to get and if i going to solve it so how to solve how to solve okay so that's an issue so i i created i i take z as a parameter z will be parameter okay and the solution is something like this x equal to 4 minus 3t and y equal to 3 plus 2t okay and z equal to t so you know i am going to take t as one of the you know in a parametric equation just assume z equal to t and convert x and y in form of z and just rewrite them okay so this is a parametric equation okay so in the above case you are having uh, you know non zero rows are 3 and a number of variables were also 3 so you can solve those e equations okay however in the second case your non zero rows are less than the number of variables so you need to perform some parametric for equations and then uh, accordingly you need to solve it in the third case what will happen here what you are seeing a uh, uh, this is your uh, row reduced matrix and what's happened there is no solution here you can write that it's a null or phi why there is no solution a row reduced matrix has a row of zeros on the left side on the left side but the right hand side it isn't zero now what's happened here here it is you can see in augmented matrix here is your row is completely zero but here it's not zero okay how is this possible okay in the previous case this one was was also zero but but in this case uh, you, here you are getting two so if you are getting this kind of solution after solving into reduced uh, eclean format okay row eclean format if you are going to get this kind of thing so you have to interpret it okay sir this is not possible so it it is having no solution you can write it's a no no solution all right so accordingly accordingly here also uh, your, your equations has been solved for example uh, you are given a system of equation 2x plus y equal to 7 1 by y equal to 3 by 2 minus z equal to 1 okay and this is your augmented matrix this is your augmented matrix and these are the operations which you have followed up so this is what the result you got okay and then afterwards again you try to reduce it whatever be the possibility in your hand so you know sometimes you know what happens when we do maths uh, when when you also i hope you did the, all these calculations in your mathematics okay uh, it's up to your level of understanding what operations you can follow up it's up to your level of understanding okay um, if i also do the same thing which i used to in my engineering okay yeah uh, like like this one to aisa kar le like just multiply this row with this number and this row with this number in fact i am also not that much aware of the properties okay ki left wala like uh, you know uh, these are the two rows the uh, unique element the non zero element present on the left and the element which is present above on the row uh, and this should be non zero uh, and this should be present on the right of that so that much also not been uh, i am not been aware and then at the last bottom row should have to be zero then it is said to be your uh, reduce or uh, eclean format and all these things i but the thing is what i know is i need to perform the transformations 
I need to do the changes in the rows. Okay, and and the thing is, I need to reduce it into zero and one. Most of the that's what the thought is. It should have to be convert um, the zeros. So this uh, this is something which I used to do, and here also the same uh, concept. The, uh, normally, we need to follow. Redu whatever be the possibility. If you want to multiply it by half, multiply it. If you want to multiply it by minus one, multiply it. This is the reduced format. Last. Reduce row equation. One, zero, 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 one, zero, and zero, zero, one. That's it. This is what you got. And the equation, if I, I would say x equal to 2, y equal to 3, and z equal to minus 1. This is the values you are going to get. Okay. All right. So this is how you are going to solve the system of linear equations using matrices. Now, inverse of a matrix. Again, very much important. Inverse. How to calculate the inverse? See, the inverse of a matrix A is a matrix that when multiplied by A itself, it's going to give the identity. Okay. Matrix multiplied by itself. If it is identity in nature, then it's said to be inverse of a matrix and it is represented by A to the power minus 1. That's what the inverse means. Okay, so uh, so how to calculate the inverse? The matrix which have their inverse are called as in invertible in nature. Okay, and others are called as singular matrix. Remember, every word is a technical here, technically used. A matrix which is whose inverse is calculated called as an invertible, and others are called as a singular matrix. Okay, now. Oh, the thing which told above a multiplied by a inverse is equal to identity yeah we know that okay we are going to get an identity matrix okay so what what are the steps i need to follow to calculate the inverse of a matrix because usually now this is this is something complex in nature okay i also do the maths when uh, it's and you should be accurate in your calculations okay while performing matrix multiplication, while doing uh, this uh, inverse of a calculating uh, inverse of a matrix, then uh, you know adjoint, and there are many other things also. Okay, so what are the steps? Write the augmented matrix consisting of original matrix and identity and identity matrix with an original on left and uh, left and identity on the left. Okay, so uh, here it is A I A I. All right. So this is my matrix. Okay, this is my matrix. All right. 0, 1, 2, 1, 0, 0, and 1, 0, and this, so on. This is my matrix. Then I need to perform Gaussian elimination such that the original matrix on the left is converted to identity. Okay, so whatever be present in the left now. That should be converted into identity. I need to perform Gaussian elimination. The elimination which I did above. Okay. And then during the operation, converted matrix obtained on the right hand side from identity matrix is the reverse of the original matrix. Now what does this mean? During the operation which I followed during Gaussian elimination. Okay, that whatever the results I'm going to get, the converted matrix obtained on the right hand side from the identity matrix is the reverse of the original matrix and that is that is called as an inverse that is actually called as an inverse okay so you know you you can understand that what i'm getting 1 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 1 what i got here okay my target was to check out and to make it as an identity you know i wrote a i a i you can understand this is identity 1 0 0 0 1 0 and 0 0 1 this is identity and this is your matrix 0 1 2 1 0 3 and 4 minus 3. This is your matrix A. And this is your identity. I need to perform whatever the possible operations I can to make to make this thing as identity. This thing as identity. And if I did convert, if I'm successful in that, if I'm successful in that, okay, converting this into identity, if I can convert this into identity, whatever I am left on right hand side with this identity actually that will be the inverse. Okay, so I applied all the transformations. Okay, just to make this thing as an identity. And I know that what is identity? 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1. I applied all the transformations here. Okay, just to, to make this thing as an identity. Here, here, and all, all those things. Okay, 
and after transformation it it converted into identity it become 100010 and 001 and what is left here with me minus 9 by 2 7 minus 3 by 2 minus 2 4 minus 1 3 by 2 minus 2 minus uh, minus 1 by 2 you know this is left to me here and whatever left now that is the inverse this is the inverse to me do you got the point or not please let me know okay do you got this thing Ramya Yes sir we got it so Okay what about other students You need to organize your yes, matrix sir. AI format okay AI format and your target is your target is you need to convert your matrix into identity and you need to apply the transformations over it and after applying transformations whatever the rest you are getting when you did convert it into 10 and identity format this is what you get at the last okay this thing and this is what your inverse of a matrix is okay the simple steps fine now projection of a vector how to project a vector see mathematically projection of a vector a on vector b means a part of vector a projected in the direction of the b just you know writing writing statements we al already know but you know sometimes english seems to be why wh what they are saying sir what what they are saying projection of a vector a on b i need to project a on b how how i can project a on b matlab means the part of vector a projected in the direction that means the part okay of vector a projected in the direction i, I need to check what is the direction of b so the instance of a or the part of a in the direction of b with some angle whatever be the thing that's called as a projection and this is how it's visualized okay here it is here this is uh, this is your direction of b na no? this is b vector okay and this is your a vector and this is your angle theta so this angle theta that means it's a on b it's a projection it's a projection okay that means how much angle i'm going to say between a and b that's that's calculated as ab Vector a dot vector b divided by magnitude of a and b. Here it is the result. Okay, here is what my result is. That is cos theta. So if someone says, "What is the projection? What is the projection of a on b?" You will say, "Sir, for a on b, na, it will be a dot a upon a magnitude of a into magnitude of b." And if someone say, "What is the projection of b on a?" You then you will say, "Sir, b dot a divided by magnitude of b into magnitude of a." simple okay so it's a cos theta it's an angle between them here it is fine and and the thing is if i do multiply here a then it's a cos theta a cos theta a cos theta just take uh, you know a from here and that will be a cos theta and if i take b na then it will be cos theta projection of b on a that's what i was telling you this is the diagram for the projection okay so a projection matrix is a matrix which transform a vector from one direct one dimension to another dimension transformation of a vector from one dimension to the another dimension um it's look like uh, you know this definition to understand we need to know about the basis of orthogonal projection okay uh, which is easy and required very much in the linear algebra okay so just take an example p equal to 0 1 0 1 just take a matrix p 0 1 0 this is the matrix now this matrix p transform any vector y equal to x that means multiply p with vector uh, x and y it can transform it transform it okay so geometrically to the projection of a in matrix b is given as a dot projection b projection of any matrix a in b is written as a dot projection b where projection b gives projection of matrix b that means project project b na a dot project b that means projection of b okay that's what it means for all right so just don't get too much uh, you know involved in sir is there any doubt or some confusion something like that. this is what my uh, thing is to make uh, you know simplified projection i projected a on b and this is what the result i got 
a dot b upon b equal to a cos theta okay and uh, if i do take an, an example p p here it is and if i need to transform any vector into y equal to x that means multiply p with the vector x and y you need to multiply so you know this is a matrix this is a matrix and i need to perform any transformation on any other matrix i need to multiply this matrix with that particular matrix this and it's a simple concept okay it's a simple concept this is called as transformation i i will multiply this matrix with any of the matrix obviously the initial matrix will be transformed according to it okay so uh, that's what it's mentioned here so no don't don't go into depth, just a simple understanding eigen values and the eigen vectors very very important terms very important terminology because they are used in algorithms okay and i already told initially when i was starting my uh, my topic linear algebra there are algorithms for example pca principal component analysis okay in svd singular value decomposition uh, they re uh, means pca requires this thing eigen value and eigen vector and you have also studied and we have did some basic problem also in the last class so eigen vector okay two things uh, you you also know two things vector and the scalar if i would say scalar na that's a eigen value if i would say vector na then it's a eigen vector okay so eigen vector of a matrix a is a vector representation it's a vector any matrix for any matrix eigen vector is a vector representation of that matrix and uh, and what is this value eigen value eigen uh, value is the values which you need to calculate for that particular matrix the scalar values okay now how how to calculate i hope we have seen one example uh, in the last class in which we wrote an equation av equal to lambda v and that lambda na you told that sir this that is scalar that is actually a eigen value and i need to calculate that value and i introduced determinant also there i will solve that particular equation i will get the value of lambda and i will resubstitute that particular value in this av equal to lambda v and i will get Uh, according to the number of values for the lambda for example 2 so i'm going to get the two vector equations that's what we did yesterday class only all right so eigen vector of a matrix a is a vector representation x says that when x is multiplied with a matrix then the direction of the resultant matrix remains same as vector x whatever be the direction of x you know it will remain same for the a also okay it means that matrix obtained by the product of a and x is a matrix ax it just is scaled scaled whatever be the scalar quantities are that means what are the eigen values are that means whatever the lambda are it just scaled up and direction will remain same so this is what i have wrote and i was telling av equal to lambda v instead of v na here x is written a lambda is an eigen value already discussed already told you also know that okay so um, they are used for the transformations actually and transformation is that means i need to you know scale up my uh, your uh, matrix okay uh, keeping the direction same okay so if the new transform vector is just a scale from the original vector then the original vector is known as a eigen vector of the original matrix okay so this this kind of transformation is said to be an uh, you know eigen vector and the vectors that have this characteristics are special vectors these are special vectors that means just they got scaled up and there is no change in the direction just scaled up okay so these are special vectors called as the eigen vectors so eigen vectors are used to represent the large dimensional matrices okay now how to find them what is an approach all right so the approach uh, is uh, quite simple this is the equation okay i need to solve this equation ax equal to lambda x and i will be doing ax equal to minus lambda x equal to 0 because i will shift this lambda x to this side okay and i will take x common so it will be a minus lambda and x okay and then um, you know i am going to prepare the determinant of it i need to solve the equation i need to solve it for the lambda and i am depending upon yeah here it is here it is a minus lambda e equal to 
just prepare a determinant solve it whatever the value of lambda are coming just resubstitute it into the equation and form the vectors that's it this is the approach i need to follow for the eigen value and the eigen vectors okay determinant very important concept core concept okay that means if you need to solve a matrix you are going to have a you know determinant of you need to calculate a determinant of it okay so um, we can understand that determinant as a function which maps every square matrix with a unique number okay and that can be used to solve many mathematical equations you know uh, about that for example i am available with a matrix like this a b c d so what is the determinant of a b c d i will multiply by a to d minus c to b this is a determinant of matrix a okay and if i am available with 3 cross 3 matrix so how to solve this 3 cross 3 matrix determinant okay this is something you know important okay and uh, so sometimes it happens when i was also studying at my uh, you know uh, you doing your the kind of engineering which you are also doing same thing some sometimes it happens that when your calculations are not correct now obviously in math the only thing is calculations if you are not correct now you are going to get the wrong results because math is not something you can give uh, the numbers on the basis of nearby or something no correct means correct only that's a fact so how to how to find the determinant of your matrix okay so here here the approach is take this a a multiply e to i minus h to f okay e to i and h to f fine then take b b okay and you you need to hide so when when you are performing this task a when you are taking this value a na you need to hide this column and this row and just only remained was e i and h f okay when you need to consider this b now then you need to hide this row and this complete column and then you need to multiply d and i and g and f okay d i and g and f only one thing is there you you are seeing minus sign minus sign here okay you need to if you are order of multiplication is same always so here there will be a minus sign what i used to do in my uh, in my uh, you know studies uh, i don't take the minus sign what i do i do uh, consider b and i multiply reverse i multiply f into g minus d into i i used to do that this thing that is also same okay and then when i am going to consider c i need to hide this row i need to hide this column and just multiply d into h and h into e that's it g into e and uh, you know this thing and here is your result this is how you need to perform and same pattern same pattern is follow for high order matrices if you need to calculate the determinant same pattern is follow there is no change in the pattern okay and remember the pattern continues for high order matrices 4 cross 4 so if i am going to consider a na i need to solve this this first 3 cross 3 matrix then b then again same 3 cross 3 matrix i need to you know solve them and uh, the sign is minus plus minus okay minus plus minus this order will be followed this is the pattern plus minus plus minus this is the pattern i need to follow just notice i just uh, put a bold mark to it well high order calculations however you are not been given to find some high order calculation or let's just you need to remember this thing all right now finding eigen vectors so you know uh, we have already solved or we we did considered this equation okay we are available with a matrix a okay and uh, we we are going to find the determinant of a minus lambda i okay whatever be the value of lambda will come i will resubstitute in the equations and that will be going to make me uh, give the results for my vector values for your uh, the given matrix that will be the eigen vectors all right now let's have some uh, more notes related to it that means computing lambda and the v okay that means to find eigen values lambda of a matrix a 
find the roots of the characteristic polynomial characteristic polynomial so this this is my characteristic equation this is my characteristic equation i have already told you okay this is my characteristic equation okay you need to convert this into characteristics okay and after converting it into characteristic equation you need to solve this characteristic equation by calculating the determinant a minus lambda equal to 0 for example i am working with this uh, uh, matrix 5 minus 2 6 minus 2 I will going to calculate the determinant phi minus lambda minus two six minus two minus lambda equal to zero, and I'm going to get the value of two 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 uh, eigen values lambda one equal to one and lambda two equal to two, and I'm going to substitute. I'm going to use this equation a x equal to lambda x. Okay, and this is these two uh, you know x one and x one and x two. These are the two vectors I'm going to find it out. This is eigen value and the eigen vector. Okay, very simple. Just in this, this much only you got the complete, uh, you know, structure of eigen value and the eigen vectors. Now, anyone is having doubt in the eigen value and eigen vector, please let me know. Any doubt in eigen value and eigen vector? Anyone? Divya. No, sir. Fine, understood. Well. Okay. What about other students? No doubt, sir. Okay. I want you guys to be, you know, interactive. Also, if you want to say something, if you know, say, and if you don't know, you can ask. Whatever the thing is, you can. Okay, so uh, here I found and explained the eigen value and the eigen vectors. Now the next thing is, now the next thing is, let's come. Consider the algorithms where, in machine learning algorithms, where these eigenvalue and eigenvectors concepts are being helpful. So till now, we in linear algebra, what we studied, we studied some scalar, we studied vector, we studied matrices, okay, and uh, we studied determinants, okay, we studied the properties which are used in the linear algebra for, uh, algebra for solving the equations, okay, we studied all those concepts. This is what is required for ML and the data sciences, okay, and Eigen value, eigen vectors, and then where they are used. Here is the equation. Uh, here is your algorithm. Principal component analysis, PCA. It's called as PCA, popular. It's a dimensionality reduction method that is often used to reduce the dimensionality of the last data set by transforming a large set of variables into smaller one that still contains most of the information in the last data set. Remember, remember, you know, many hard things. To be understood in this simple statement, L dimensionality reduction technique. Now, what is this dimensionality reduction technique? See, in case of data science and machine learning, now you are available with the data sets. Okay, uh, when I will be there, now obviously we need to do the projects, and we will be available with the data sets. So these data sets are having uh, uh, this data set. For example, if I do consider one data set, one data set may comprises of many columns. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five columns. Okay, so twenty-five columns I am available with, and if I am going to use all the columns in my model, machine learning model, so sir, isn't it create a problem of underfitting and overfitting? We did started initially with the same concepts. Underfitting again, you are having a compromise with the performance of your model. Overfitting again, you are having a compromise. So, sir, the thing is, sir, I can't use all the features. Sir. This is not good. So, just select only those features which are relevant. Out of twenty, if there are, you just select, sir, uh, top uh, six, seven, eight features, sir. Okay, which are highly contributing to the output. Okay, what what is my desire is so you know dimensionality reduction. So, if I consider that I am available with a feature of twenty. And I going to reduce it to seven, seven dimension. Okay, so this is what the technique is PCA. That's what it's told. And it it's not like reduce. अरे यार चलो you need to reduce the dimension ना. Okay okay. Just just remove thirteen and take seven. No no. There is some tech. There is some logic behind it. I need to consider only seven ना. But those seven should be highly contributing. That means. they should be 
having a percentage more than 90 contribution 90 percent contribution in my data for my modeling purpose and if i reduce some data some dimension which is contributing only three to four percent that will be that will not hurt me okay so not blindly we can't reduce the features there is some approach pca this is what it's selling okay so uh, as per the definition it's understood that's a method of finding the most important principal components I need to find most important principal components or the feature vectors of large data as a matrix. Okay, so how to do how to do that? The question is, sir, how how we are going to do that? See, we need to find all the eigenvector and I, all the eigenvalue of the square matrix obtained. Okay, obtained and eigenvectors as a feature of principal components with the importance uh, important value reflected to the respective eigenvalues. Okay. Now, let's consider to be in a very simple way. Just understand the steps which, which are required. For example, we are available with the data of M products having N feature. M products, N feature. M products, N, N feature means what, what is what it's saying? That means I am available with a matrix of dimension N across M. Okay, n dimension, n feature, that means number of columns here are n. And if I say number of uh, n cross m, just say it. Now, we multiply a and a dash to get a matrix uh, s, that is a dash a, a dash a, that means uh, I, I need to go for a covariance matrix. Covariance matrix. Now, uh, what is this, sir? Covariance matrix, I need to calculate. So, th so the thing is how first I need to transform a which is of m cross n that will be a dash and convert it into n cross m. So I am available with initially, please don't get confused. Initially I am available with a matrix A whose dimension is dimension is m cross cross okay just take it as x m cross n and i will calculate the transpose a dash or t to the power t i just make it as dash okay that is equal to n cross n calculate the transpose of it okay and then what i need to do i need to perform we need to multiply both of them a multiply by its transpose a multiply by its transpose now i'm going to get a matrix s this matrix this s is a covariance matrix remember so a is a, uh, a just a dash a dash multiply by a i am going to get the result as s and s is a covariance matrix covariance matrix after that what you need to do uh, i need to perform eigen decomposition of it eigen decompose that means i need to calculate eigen value and eigen vectors for it Calculate eigenvalue and eigenvectors for covariance matrix. Now, this step number, next step is calculate eigen both values and uh, values and uh, vectors for it. Eigenvalue and eigenvectors for it. Okay. Now, we sort all eigenvectors as per the eigenvalues in decreasing order. Then decreasing order and make a set of them. Sort them in decreasing order. Now, suppose if you want to reduce a dimension, from n to k, we need to take only k eigenvectors. Okay, just we need to consider only k eigenvectors because there might be any number of eigenvectors, I don't know. Okay, so I need to take only k eigenvectors and to reduce the feature dimension, we multiply a with a newly formed n cross a. Okay, with newly formed n cross a. So whatever be the vectors you are going to get, you need to multiply your initial matrix with that particular particular uh, you know vectors okay and the result which you are going to get will be your reduced matrix now the matrix which i am having of n products there will be only top k features top k features available to us so it's uh, something i explained you uh, in a general terms in a general terms that what actually happens in principal component analysis okay still uh, you know there is certainly a big depth in uh, this particular concept in this algorithm however the approach followed is all same 
this is what the approach followed okay same approach followed okay just having uh, tra matrix transpose multiply them get s uh, then uh, calculate eigen value eigen vector of it and then arrange the eigen vectors take the top k multiply with the uh, initial matrix and get the final result that's what happened in principal component analysis top k features and there is one more approach then there is one more uh, technique one more algorithm that is singular value decomposition svd and the formula for the svd here is a equal to u sigma v cut transpose v transpose now what is this what is this no understand we decompose the square matrix in terms of its eigen values in pc in principal component analysis that's what the stuff we have seen and just you rewind these all uh, what i'm telling you just listen carefully and keep the things in mind if it doesn't mind you know that all, all, already these things are recorded okay so just remember what i what are the steps i told to you for principal component analysis and why you should know the reason why this pc happened for what reason i have used this pc okay now uh, there is some problem with uh, the pca the problem with the eigen decomposition is that it can uh, be done only for square matrices so uh, for only square matrices we can perform decomposition and you know whatever the pca technique i applied now that is only for the square matrix that means uh, square matrices you are all this decomposition so far factorization or decomposition for non symmetric and non square matrices we do singular value decomposition there is some another technique that is svd singular value decomposition this approach i need to apply so how how i am going to do this singular value decomposition see again the point is let let us understand uh, here here it is a decomposition of a rectangular matrix i am not talking about i am not talking about square matrix here i am talking about rectangular matrix okay that means uh, some some any 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 dimension m cross n some something you can take any any rectangular matrix you can take so it is a decomposition of a rectangular matrix into product of two orthogonal square and a rectangular diagonal matrix that means two square matrix and a diagonal matrix this is the this is the result which i am going to get i need to divide this rectangular matrix in such a way that the result which i am going to get is the multiplication of three different matrices and these three different matrices are one two of them are the square matrices and one of them is a is a your rectangular diagonal matrix okay so here you are seeing also this is what you are seeing m u so sigma v star this is what you are seeing the result okay so m cross n this is a square matrix n cross n this is a square matrix and m cross n this is a rectangular matrix with uh, uh, with the, your rect it's a diagonal matrix that means only uh, all the elements which are present in the diagonal are one rest of all the elements are zero so i need to reduce this m in such a way in such a way that it should give me this result u sigma v star where u and v are orthogonal matrix which means that ab, ab, now the question is are orthogonal what is this orthogonal which means that transpose u u transpose u if i do multiply it will be identity and v transpose v it's also be identity okay if i do multiply uh, these i'm going to get the identity and if i do this thing i'm going to get the identity then it is orthogonal in nature okay so here is the what the singular uh, value decomposition equations are so a equal to u sigma v ka transpose a a is again a matrix of real numbers of n cross n real or complex but it can be real or complex matrix your u u the result which i am going to get is again a real or a complex uh, matrix unitary matrix real or complex numbers m cross m sigma is a rectangular diagonal matrix and v is again a complex unitary matrix that is square matrix that's what i'm saying u and v are square matrix this is a diagonal matrix okay either it's a real or complex whatever so just taking a matrix for example if i say I take an example so you need to remember you need to just remember this thing this equation a equal to u sigma v ka transpose where u and v are square matrix and this sigma is a diagonal rectangular matrix and what i need to do i need to decompose this a 
decompose this a into this format this is what your singular value decomposition is okay i need to perform this task so taking a matrix a 2 4 1 3 0 0 0 0 just take this matrix so taking a square matrix a a dash now a a dash dimension is m cross m to its eigen decomposition is done that is all n eigen values are taken and represented as n cross n see wait 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 what happened what happened this is your a a a into a transpose just multiply this you are going to get some another matrix that is w okay a dot a transpose you are going to get this thing and then you are going to find the eigen values of it just calculate the eigen value of it okay whatever be the eigen value is whatever the eigen value is you need to uh, you need to form a matrix u out of it a matrix u will be formed out of it and then again the same step will be done with the square matrix a this thing to generate the eigen decompose that means a transpose dot a okay and this is what you are going to get another another matrix v and the middlemost matrix is a diagonal matrix of the same dimension a with the diagonal components being the square root of the eigen values i need to have the square root of the eigen values okay uh, for a a dash or a dash a both for this eigen value so this is your s sigma okay so just to have a simplification of all these simplification for example this is your uh, you know term document matrix this is your matrix okay word assignments topics just this is m cross n singular matrix n cross n diagonal matrix and n cross m singular matrix this is how you know your document uh, matrix if you are available with your excel sheet of result is available with i can uh, you know bifurcate it separate it uh, in this particular arrangements so this will be your singular value decomposition okay though still you i, I know that you might be having some trouble sir you might be having some trouble that sir uh, how this has been calculated and uh, you know there is some maths there is some maths behind it much more which is not been uh, looking here directly just only some cut short steps are available but the point is yes there is some some more calculations to be needed to understand the thing however and just making the thing simple you need to understand this equation okay why you are performing this task you should be knowing that so everything is just a part of a operations i need to perform on where matrices that's what the task is okay so i i took one matrix okay and calculated this a a dash okay so a a transpose i calculated i got some value w i calculated the eigen values of it okay and on the behalf of that i calculated what is a matrix u what is a matrix u okay and then later on i use the same step to calculate the matrix v again a transpose a this is a transpose a previously i perform i perform a dot a transpose a dot a transpose now i perform this thing a transpose a whatever the result i am going to get same operation i performed and calculated the value B, v and then the middlemost matrix which i need to calculate that is a diagonal matrix okay uh, i i found by calculating the square root of the eigen values square root of the eigen values of this and this okay both will have the same eigen values usually both are having the same eigen values though but i calculate the square root of the eigen values and just put put this thing here okay so this is s and this is your svd you know simple uh, one example that how a singular value decomposition is there for your uh, data set the real life example okay so this is some of the maths uh, related to your uh, linear algebra in case of uh, the data science and the machine learning now uh, if anything is in your mind please let me know you want to say or ask any uh, anything any question okay we have studied most of the concepts here for the linear algebra and the part for that means the important thing in linear algebra is the operations transformations which you do apply over the matrices okay solving the equation for solving equation we convert them into matrices and the matrix operation okay is something which has been used in the linear algebra that's what the importance is and you have already studied the numpy library okay so here whatever the task which we are applying now all are 
available in numpy numpy is already been having a method for uh, the so solving of uh, this linear algebra okay so you can directly use the import numpy and you can directly perform all the transformations there okay there is already predefined methods available in numpy okay so you can solve it however what is the maths behind that now that you have studied in my uh, this uh, you know lecture these are some important concepts in the linear algebra which we need to study so we have performed this thing now do you have any doubt please let me know if not i will proceed ahead with the probability any doubt students please let me know Sure. Okay, so this sheet I will share with you for your study purpose. Okay, and if you are not having any doubt, let's proceed ahead with the probability. Another important concept, very very much important concept in machine learning and your uh, data science thing. Okay, so uh, here the topics, topics which I told yesterday, na linear algebra, probability theory, and the statistics. That's case importance. So we are up with the linear algebra. now we are going to work with the probability and the statistics okay then later on we will cover the calculus parts and other things okay so let's proceed with the probability okay fine so introduction to probability see probability you know and it's quite challenging also that sir if i need to find the outcome of uh, this thing happen then uh, what is the probability or what is what is the chances what is the chance that this will this thing will happen or not okay so that is your something it's called as a probability okay so permutation combination probability this always you know it's uh, the formula learning and you got some problems some problems which are which are challenging okay but this concept probability and permutation combinations okay which we did study in our 11th and 12th standards are always been important key factor for math these are the key factors so uh, every learnable or a database mathematical model obviously perform some interpretation based upon the probability there is some intuition behind it okay so almost all the machine learning algorithms and yes there are already algorithms developed on the basis of probability probability based algorithms for example uh, there is an uh, algorithm ne based algorithm and there are various types of ne based algorithm that means i am having gaussian ne based algorithm i am having multinomial uh, algorithm i am having bernoulli ne based algorithm they are based upon this concept only probability and they are used for real life problem solving uh things that means uh the applications related to the natural language processing and uh, you know such kind of problem statements they are uh, applicable so uh, all the machine learning and deep learning models uh, uses the same property probabilistic or you know some interpretation or whatever the things are this is an approach so the knowledge of probability what is required for you that i am going to explore here in uh, our studies what is required for machine learning and the data science okay so uh, there are most of the advancements in machine learning like there are many models many uh, you know uh, uh, this uh, applications has been built jans auto encoders which are developed with a great probabilistic intuitions okay so that's why it keeps very much importance for us to understand so let us first uh, uh, go through some uh, simple terms some simple terms let us understand them uh if i am been given here a sample space okay so set of all possible outcomes for an experiment is said to be a sample space okay for example you are either tossing a coin okay and you know that sir the possible chances are either i am going to get a head either i am going to get a tail head and tail these are the possible chances and 50 50% chances are there sir for the head and the tail so sample space is the set of all the possible outcomes for an event okay second if you are rolling a dice okay uh, and the dice com comprises of six numbers okay 1 2 3 4 5 6 so what are the possible chances for uh, rolling a dice <laughs> what is the sample space yeah 
any question please let me know okay my voice now now my voice is there okay can you hear me Yes, yeah yes. yes sir now your voice is okay sir okay 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 thank you so so the point is i was discussing about the probability uh so in the introduction have you heard about the, heard the introduction what i said no sir okay so let me explain you again about the introduction part see uh in data science and machine learning probability is something which is uh, of greater importance because most of the algorithms here are following some approach some interpretation some inti there is a, some intuition between uh, based upon uh, this probability and uh, in our schooling also in our uh, 11th and 12th standards we did study it about permutation and the combination we did study it about uh, this probability uh, stuff where the things are based upon the outcomes okay uh, and uh, and in data science and machine learning we are having algorithms for example naive bayes algorithm okay there we are having different forms of naive bayes algorithm like gaussian naive bayes algorithm i am available uh, with your uh, uh, multinomial naive bayes algorithm i am available with uh, uh, your uh, uh, bernoulli naive bayes algorithm so these are probabilistic algorithms okay which are used in a real world for uh i do consider one example of natural language processing where i need to uh, solve a problem of sentiment sentiment analysis or if i am going to work upon a problem statement related to fake news detection okay so these algorithm especially if i do talk about multinomial so that's used in uh, such kind of problem statement probability uh, probability why i am going to consider this thing i am available for example the two outcome 0 and 1 okay what is the probability of getting 0 what is the probability of getting 1 as an outcome that's certainly an important uh, mode of calculation for me to do okay so uh, here here most of the uh, ml advancements recent advances are based upon the probabilistic approach okay and uh, such of uh, such as jans and auto encoders there are many things they are based upon this per particular approach okay so the thing is i am not i am going to look for i am going to look for uh, what outcomes okay if this thing happens then what is the probability if that thing happens what is the probability what are the chances of occurrence of another uh, activity okay so that's that's a probability uh, based term and you know you know that in probability i am going to have a value between 0 to 1 okay i am going to talk about the percentage i am going to talk about the chances in case of probability so machine learning models data science uh, things definitely work upon the probability and here is one of the um, you know simple example i am going to consider that is if i am available with a sample space that means what are the possible outcomes if i do toss a coin so you know that sir when you do toss a coin now you are going to get head and the tail if i am going to roll a dice i am going to have 1 2 3 4 5 6 only six values are there sir when you are going to roll a dice okay so sample space is the set of all possible outcomes head tail 1 2 3 4 5 6 all these values on on any other activity which you are going to do. so here this is the sample space now what is an event event is subset of the sample space if i am going to have only head or i am going to have tail or either i am going to have head and tail both it's a subset of the sample space it's an event if i am going to have 2 4 6 out of 1 2 3 4 5 6 so it's an event okay so event is a subset of the sub, uh, sample space okay now if i am going to consider new event what is i am going to make a new event e union f is defined which is consist of the events of s which is represented in in or f or uh, in both so here it is been represented e u f that is e union f that is if i am available with the set of 1 2 if i am available with the set of 3 4 union of e and uh, f is 1 2 3 4 
so i need to consider only the unique value uh, values in the set that's what my uh, you know uh, uh, calculation is for the union and you know that for intersection i need to consider only the common elements you know about the concepts of union and the intersection in case of set so you know set theory is also very much important when you are working with the probability you should have a knowledge of set theory okay so here is a union of the two set and here is a intersection of two set if you don't have common elements between the two sets obviously you are going to get the result as uh, phi null okay so we, we know about this stuff so unions e1 e2 en are the events so union of these events are e, e1 union e2 union e3 and en okay intersection of these much events so e1 intersection e2 intersection e3 intersection uh, en and so on okay this is the intersection complement what is the complement see event which consists of all outcomes of s event which consists of all outcomes of uh, uh, s which is not present in e okay that means event which consists of all outcomes of s which is not present in e is said to be complement of e okay so e union complement of e is equal to s so whatever for example s is the global thing okay and if i take a subset from s it will be e rest of all is a complement of e okay so for example i am available in s i am available with head and tail and if i only pick head out of it so the complement of e is tail because head i am available what will be the next its complement and its complement will be tail if i took one from see for example my sample space is 1 2 3 3 and if i pick one out of it as an event e so remaining 2 and 3 these these are the complement of e okay so whatever be left in the uh, sample space after picking this e so that will be the complement so if i do consider later on the union of e and the complement of e it will be the sample space okay it will be sample space and uh, uh, here for event e in s p denote the probability of occurring of an event e in s p e is a probability of occurrence of an event e in s and it has some properties always always you know that probability lies between 0 to 1 probability is always between 0 to 1 and probability of sample space is 1 remember this is the basic properties probability of an event is always lie between 0 to 1 it can be 0 it can be 1 it's it can be between 0 and 1 also however the probability of p and s lies it's equal to 1 and events are mutually exclusive in nature okay that means for mutually exclusive events p that means union of all e and some p e's and p intersection of all e's is equal to 0 this is called as mutually exclusive events mutually exclusive event that means sum of probability of all e's and intersection of e sum of probability of e and intersection of e it should be zero that means these are mutually exclusive that means the probability of union of all e that means e1 union e2 union e3 union e4 and i am going to calculate the probability of them this is equal to this is equal to probability of e's that means p e1 okay and p inter and intersection and intersection of e of all e's so what you are going to consider here what's the consideration p of e's and uh, intersection of all e here and calculate the sum of them it's going to result you zero that is mutually exclusive events okay and if they are not mutually exclusive here is a formula p plus pf equal to p e union f plus p e intersection f if e and f are not mutually exclusive here is a formula so uh, how to there, there are various formulas and i need to uh, the we are not going to prove them just only to understand that 
uh, what formulas I need to write. For example, uh, if I'm going to have P E union F for and either you can say A union B, it's up to you because you have studied in your books uh, that A union B thing. Okay, however, they all are same E and F and all this. Just only the fact is E is the event and uh, you know F is another event. So I'm just taking E and F here. So if you are available with A union B, so you can say that P A union B equal to P A plus P B minus P A intersection B. According to the set theory, this is what happens. A union B equal to uh, A plus B minus A intersection B. And if I'm having P A union B union C, that means E, F and G, union of all. So what is the formula? Then the formula is P E plus P F minus P E F plus P G and uh, minus P E G. This is the simplification and this is the final result. Just remember the final result and we are not going to derive it. The final result is P plus P F plus P G minus P E F E G and F G minus 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 and then plus P E F G. This is a pattern you need to follow. Just follow the pattern. So if I'm going to consider the union of two set, here is a formula for two non mutually exclusive events. Okay, and if this is exclusive events, you know that the result is zero. Okay, for non-exclusive, the result is not zero. However, we need to apply this formula over it. This is for the two um, two events E and F, and this is for the three events. Okay, here is a formula, and you need to carry on the pattern. Okay, whether it is three events, whether it is four events, whether it is five events, whatsoever. Okay, here is the you know formula. Okay, which we have already discussed above. Now, very important, very very important conditional probability. Conditional probability. Okay, what does this mean? Because this conditional probability is used in the theorems and algorithms uh, for your uh, you know deriving uh, machine learning models. And as as I told, Bayes law, Bayes theorem, it's based upon it's based upon conditional probability only. Okay, so for example, let us suppose you are available with the two events E and F be the two event. Okay, I'll just understand very carefully. Understand very carefully. You are available with the two events E and F. Okay, so what is the conditional probability that E will occur given that F is already occurred? Now, condition now, I'm talking on condition. Something happened and I need to check out if this thing happened what will be the outcome of another event what is the probability what are the chances of outcome of another event so this is condition conditional probability it's denoted by pef it's quite simple conditional probability that e will occur given f is already occurred so this is how you are going to write f is occurred i need to check out the probability of e this is conditional probability so how to calculate p e f the formula is p e intersection f probability of e intersection f divided by probability of f this is the conditional probability remember this is it's a uh, you know it's a formula for it so p intersection f divided by p f is a conditional probability that i need to calculate the probability of e given that f has already occurred f has already occurred let us take an example because you will say me sir formula formula to sir uh, we know that either we can check somewhere uh, but the point is sir it, it should be understood with some example okay so let us consider some good example Suppose you need to find that the sum of the outcome of two dice when rolled is is six. Given first dice comes out as four. Now you already given the outcome. First outcome you already given that you are going to uh, roll two dice. Okay, and in the dice number one you got four. I need to check what is the probability that I am going to have six. as an outcome some i need to calculate some so if one is occurred 
in one dice in the second dice there should be 2 because 4 plus 2 that only go, going to give you 6 so i need to check out what is the probability that 2 will come in the second dice what is the chances so let, let's check about the combination what is the sample space sample space means what are all the possibilities what are the all possibilities on your dice all possibilities on your dice okay so for all the possibilities it's already mentioned first dice result is four so you need to create sample space according to it so your sample space will be four one four two four three four 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 five and four six now did you understood why this thing is happening why i took 4 1 4 2 4 3 and 4 5 and 4 6 please anyone can let me know why i took this exam uh, this thing why i took this this sample space anyone can tell me you are available with the two dice you are rolling the two dice as per the question it's already told you that the first dice should have six uh, first dice should have four and second dice second dice what should be the result what should be the result for the second dice? It can be anything. It can be 1, it can be 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. It's not fixed, no? So, the sample space which you created, these are the possibilities which may come when you are going to roll the dice. So, E. I need to have 4, 2 because this is the only requirement which is going to give me 6 as a result. So, what is the probability of coming 4, 2? 1 by 6 you understood or not please let me know understood or not girls say yes or no so the probability of getting 4 2 combination is 1 by 6 okay now I need to solve I need to uh, you know work out for conditional probability what is E intersection F Solving the same with conditional probability, the formula is E intersection F divided by PF. This is the formula for conditional probability. Where F is already occurred and I am looking forward for E to happen. Okay, so here is the formula, conditional probability. Okay, so P E intersection F, it is calculated as the probability of some 6 and the first dice. So 4 and the, it's 4 2 p intersection f that is the probability of sum 6 and first dice 4 that is p 4 2 that's 1 by 36 p intersection f 1 by 36 why 1 by 36 why it's 1 by 36 why 36 is here Total number of outcomes are 36. See, uh, we are having two dice now. One dice is having six values. So six, six are 36. But still I am having one uh, one question. P intersection F. Okay. Probability of sum and first dice. Probability of sum. That is six. This is my probability. And first dice I am already having four on it. I need to have four and two combination. What is the probability of getting four two? Overall, overall, what is the probability of getting 4 to overall? If I do consider the complete uh, knowledge of these two dices, if they are being scrolled, okay. So, 1 by 36, because there will be 36 possibilities overall. 6, 6 are 36. And 4 to is one of the result out of them. So, it took 1 by 36. Then, PF, what is this PF? Probability of first dice to be 4. Probability of first dice to be 4. What is the probability of first dice to be 4? Now, it can be 4, 1, 4, 2, 4, 3, 4, 4, 4, 5, 4, 6, 4, 7, uh, 4, 6. That's it. So, there are 6 chances now. So, out of 36, I am getting 6 by 36. So, 6 chances I am getting 4 on the first hand. PEF, this is my conditional probability. So, 1 by 36 divided by 6 by 36. So, the result is 1 by 6. This is the result. So I did started. I did started by considering the event. Okay. 
was just considering the event this was quite simple 1 by 6 this was quite simple when i worked with the conditional probability i need to take the complete probability of the outcome of both the dices when they are rolled then i found that okay sir in denominator i am going to get 36 sir that means i need to consider the complete uh, you know both of uh, the dices probability when i am going to roll them okay so this is one of the example of conditional probability now independent events independent events what are wh what does this independent event means see two events e and f are said to be independent if p e intersection f that means probability of e intersection f is equal to probability of e into probability of f p into pf that means they are independent otherwise they are dependent to each other okay so if they are independent now intersection will be what this i am going to consider the intersection now so intersection is multiplication of the probability of both of them okay if they are independent else they are dependent on each other now if i am having uh, these events number of events e1 e2 e3 up to en okay so this is what the result i am going to get for the independent probability even independent events probability of independent events e p probability of e into probability of e2 e3 and so on independent events probability so pairwise independent events not be needed in the dependent among themselves so here is your independent events probability p and b is p a into p b and dependent events p a into p b by a because here the condition will occur if they are dependent obviously i need to uh, look out for the condition conditional probability is uh, something uh, which i need to check out okay and there is one question which came into my mind and i have told you mutually exclusive okay it was it was coming in my mind can anybody anybody tell me what events are said to be mutually exclusive events what are mutually exclusive events before going uh, to uh, conditional pro i should have asked this thing mutually exclusive see mutually exclusive events are those events that do not occur at the same time okay i am not working simultaneously that means they are not uh, you know going to occur at the same time okay so when i am going to toss a coin when i am going to toss a coin i am going to get either head or either tail but it is not the case when i am going to get the same result head or tail at the same time no this is not possible so this event is mutually exclusive event okay so if a and b are mutually exclusive then its probability a or b or a union b okay which i have given with a formula okay here it is a union of all these things it's it's the result p of sum of p e i and p intersection of this is equal to 0 this is the result so mutually exclusive that means that means we cannot get both the results at the same time if i am going to roll uh, roll the dice either i am going to get 1 2 or 3 or 4 or 5 or 6 i am not going to get all of them at the same time so it's a mutually exclusive event okay so this is what you need to understand mutually exclusive all right so conditional probability independent this we have seen independent events obviously if there is a dependency now obviously you are going to work with the conditional probability so understand this is very much important conditional probability it, i am going to use it for the bayes theorem okay bayes rule bayes law chain rule okay that means uh, uh, the conditional probability rule defined over two events that means p intersection f equal to pef into pf can be extended to more than two events because more than two events for example if i am available with the four events a1 a2 a3 a4 follow up the chain rule okay so that means p a1 intersection a2 intersection a3 intersection a4 it will be like this thing 
ओके पी ए फोर इंटरसेक्शन ऑफ ए थ्री ए टू ए वन एंड ए थ्री ए टू ए वन ओके दैट मीन्स आई स्प्लिटेड दिस थिंग ओके एंड देन आई कैन री स्प्लिट दिस योर ए थ्री टू ए थ्री ए टू ए वन देन पी ए टू ए टू ए वन एंड देन सो ऑन दिस इज अ चेन रूल सो दिस कंडीशनल प्रोबेबिलिटी फॉर द टू इवेंट्स two events e and f can be extended to three events or four events and so on with this formula dependency this this formula okay you can extend it that's a chain rule in generalization they have taken uh, they have taken a summation of that okay so it's not a big deal all right now random variable again a very much important term a real value defined on a sample space is said to be a random variable okay because you know there has been asked this is a random variable so no, people don't know sir what is a random variable sir you are available with a sample space and whatever be uh, the value which is coming into the sample space it's said to be a random variable so the real values function real value function defined on a sample space any function which has been defined on the sample space it's said to be a random variable how example okay uh let let us suppose x denote a random variable that is defined over the two fair dice rolled together i am going to roll the dice two dice i have rolled okay and x is a random variable defined over it okay so p x equal to 2 that is p 1 1 x equal to 2 that p 1 1 that is 1 by 36 p x equal to 5 means 1 4 2 3 3 2 Four one. That means x equal to five means. That means I am going to take the combination of what are the possible combination. So the result I am going to get is five. So you know what is the problem statement? There is a random variable which is defined as sum of two dice rolled together. Sum. And if it has been told to you, your random variable is two. So what is the possibility I am going to get two? So either in both the dices i should get 1 1 then only my result will be 2 and the probability of getting 1 1 is 1 by 36 if i would say x equal to 5 that means the result should be 5 so how i am going to get the result as 5 2 plus 3 3 plus 2 1 4 4 1 this is how i am going to get 5 so the uh, probability is 4 by 36 that will be 1 by 9 let us suppose we toss a coin and the probability p for coming up heads after n flips resulted in a tail results in a tail define a random variable what will be the random variable for that okay so n equal to 0 that means n a number of flips na n is the number of uh, times you are going to uh, going to toss a coin number of times you are going to toss a coin and i am going to check out for the probability for coming up head what is the probability head coming up head okay so if you are not going to toss the coin Number of times is zero, so probability is n a. It's taking n a. If n equal to one, first time head comes. P is the probability. N equal to two, head after one tail. If there is a head came after one tail, so you know one minus p into p. Head comes after two tail. If you know the first two tail come and then head came na, then the probability is one minus p ka square into p. That means you know one minus p is again multiplied with this thing. Head came after n trials, n minus one trials. So it will be one minus p to the power n minus one into p. This is the probability. Okay. So if I uh, here, if I haven't done the tossing, there is no result occurred. If I tossed one, and head came instantaneously, so p is the probability. And if the head came after tail, so p into one minus p. Again, if the head came after two tail, one minus p ka square into p, and after n minus one trials, this is the probability. Okay, so you know n equal to n, n equal to three, n equal to two. These are random variables. This is a random variable. So you know people don't uh, get confused. What is this random variable? So I'm going to consider a sample space. I'm going to apply a function over it. Okay, real value function defined over a sample space. This is the function which I have applied. This is the function I applied. Over a sample space, okay. This is a random variable, and what is this discrete random variable? Discrete random variable. That means a random variable defined over a finite or countable set of values. 
it's called as discrete random variable countable values okay some countable values if i'm going to apply uh, this thing your uh, approach of random variable that means you are defining a function over that so it's a discrete random variable let us take uh, some example however um, just only if i do consider 0 and 1 0 and 1 value okay so it's discrete in nature okay continuous random variable that means if i am available with a random variable defined over continuous possible outcomes or the values if i am available with the continuous values for example uh, continuous means for example between 0 to 5 i am available with 0 0.5 1.1 2.7 3.6 4.8 this is a continuous continuous values okay so in data science and machine learning there is a great concept of continuous and discrete and categorical values you need to you need to understand understand very much important in a given data set there are columns and columns have some values you need to understand that this column this feature is having what kind of value is it continuous in nature is it discrete in nature is it categorical in nature if you know this thing now your problem is solved most of the problem is solved then you will be able to understand that uh, whether what kind of analysis i need to perform what kind of visualizations i need to do okay everything will be clear to you if you don't understand the data now then you there there is no chance that you are a data scientist you are a data analyst or whether you are an engineer nothing only da understanding data is important so here we are talking about understanding data only discrete random variable that means a random variable which is based upon discrete 0 and 1 a random variable which is defined of continuous value continuous what is continuous sir 0 you, you took no? you, you took the value between 0 to 5 0 0.1 2.2 3.5 4.7 continuous an approach is all same which you applied above yeah here here this thing you you took examples of random variable the approach is all same then cumulative distribution function that means if a distribution function of a random variable x defined over a real number b where b lies from minus infinity to plus infinity then it is cumulative distributive function okay it's cumulative uh, distribute uh, distribution uh, function distribution function okay that means if your distribution is lies on a real number between some limits minus infinity to plus infinity then it's a cumulative distribution function so it's been written here like this fb equal to px less than b less than equal to b okay now what are the properties of cumulative distributive function limit x tends to minus infinity f of x equal to 0 limit x tends to plus infinity it should be 1 obviously now probability hai to ye probability it's it's a probability now oh, probability always lies between 0 to 1 so if you are having the value of x you if you are going to consider any real number between minus infinity to plus infinity and if your value is ranging i hope you know about the concepts of limits okay so if you are considering a value to the minus infinity so this function cdf cumulative distributive function this will going to give you the result as zero and if it is going to be infinity it's going to give you the result as one and rest of all is between a to b between minus infinity to plus or whatever be the thing is okay if you are having a and b now if a is less than b so f of a is less than f of b that's it for any real number any other uh, numbers apart from minus infinity to plus infinity this is a property of cdf okay so uh, you you need to just remember these properties important important thing is only if you forget also no, no worries you are available with all these uh, uh, terms but the important but the thing is you should be knowing what is random number what is a random number uh, what is the probability how we are uh, going to what is the sample space what is an event what is conditional probability what is mutually exclusive events what are dependent events what are independent events and most of the important is the conditional probability you should remember the formula what is p a by b what is what is b means here what is a means here b is occurred sir i am looking for a to happen how to how, how to name it so, sir p a by b is p a intersection b divided by p b how to calculate a intersection b i have given the example 
you need to look out for that again these are very much important things because that that's only we are we are in a need to use ahead okay so discrete ra random variable i told that discrete random variable is a variable defined between countable or discrete set for example 0 and 1 something like that okay so this is community distribution zero uh, one by two five by six one this this kind of function is based upon cumulative distribution function okay fine bernoulli random variable just uh, let us consider this thing bernoulli random variable suppose that a trial or an experiment is happened okay you are performing some trial and uh, there is uh, one experiment happened and in this and in this the outcome is classified either successful or failure okay so you are performing some trial you are performing some experiment some activity done and the result which you got is either true or false or success or fail whatever if we let x equal to 1 if the outcome is success for example you are giving from your side okay the probability of happening of an event to be successful you are saying that its value should be uh, one and for uh, zero it's saying failure then the probability mass function for it is defined as like this px is zero equal to p and px equal to one is one minus p this is how you are we are defined the probability so the random variable following this equation is called as a bernoulli random variable bernoulli random variable so the variable which is going to follow this function okay that is said to be a bernoulli random variable so in simple terms i am going to uh, you know i am i am explaining you that what is a bernoulli random variable okay you got an event success failure you said success one you said failure zero okay so probability of success is for example p then the probability of failure will be 1 minus p simple i am not giving i am not teaching you the hard terms and you said sir the random variable of the following equation the equations which you have defined above is a bernoulli random variable and what is this suppose there are n independent trials there are n independent trials not dependent n independent trials in which success i am having a probability p and the failure i am having 1 minus p probability are performed so x represent the number of success that will occur in n trials x is said to be a bernoulli random variable with parameter np okay that means that means if x represent the number of successes that means you perform some event n times and x times you succeed okay in n trials occur in n trials x times you succeeded in n trials and its probability you will well know it's p so the random variable is defined as n comma b and if you failed then its probability will be n 1 minus p obviously so here is the function for a binomial binomial i hope you know that binomial binomial function okay so here it is pi probability mass function of a bino, uh, binomial random function is given as pi equal to ni ni pi 1 minus p to the power n minus i okay and where it is written as ni equal to n factorial upon n minus i i factorial into i factorial you know about that permutation combination this is combination no this is combination formula ncr n factorial upon n minus r factorial into r factorial this is combination formula okay so this combination multiply by pi into 1 minus p into n to the power i that is your bino binomial random variable let's say to be binomial random variable okay so this is your uh, binomial uh, formula okay and this is your combination you need to remember this okay uh, when i am going to teach you some algorithm if i would say i am going to teach you ber uh, this uh, bernoulli uh, bernoulli uh, nay by nay bayes algorithm so what i am going to teach you this thing only how to find the probabilities Th this is what you are going to learn 
so you should be knowing okay ha huh, bernoulli bernoulli uh, means this i need to write the formula for uh, this okay ni and pi 1 minus what is this p sir p is a probability and for whom this p is a probability for example sir there is an event happening n times x time i succeeded y times i failed okay so probability of success is p then the probability of failure will be 1 minus p okay so this is how uh, you know you, you should be understanding all right geometric random variable what is this geometric random variable suppose that suppose i am available with the independent trials and probability p is for the success success until a uh, probability p success are performed until a success occurs i am continuously trying 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 unless and until i am not been succeeded that is geometric random variable okay that means for example x be the number of trials you did to achieve first success so you started if you got success happy in the first attempt sir i passed the exam sir in the first attempt only i passed that's a success but if it happens in the first attempt you failed in the second attempt you failed in the third attempt you failed you got success in the fourth attempt then you are going to apply the geometric random variable x okay so it is said to be a geometric random variable with a parameter p if the probability mass function is given by pn px equal to n 1 minus p to the power n minus 1 into p that means 1 minus p is your failure and it took n minus 1 attempts for your failure and after all those failure you got succeeded p is the probability of your success okay you achieve success at p and if in the first attempt only you got success na so value of n will be 1 so 1 minus 1 is 0 so this will be 0 1 minus p to the power 0 is 1 so you are getting p yaar pehle mein hi pass ho gaye first in the first attempt you got passed and well, if you not then this is this is average you need to follow this is geometric geometric random variable okay then there comes next poison random variable continuous random variable all these are the random variables you need to understand okay so there are many things to learn here okay so the thing is we are going to cover our probability section again uh, tomorrow we'll proceed ahead we're going to finish it then we are going to uh, proceed ahead for your calculus part Okay